Accountants on tour? Sounds exciting. We learned a lot about business. Watch on. As a business accountant, my team and I spent all day long helping business owners on their journey. And today is one of these vlogs where really I just want to go a little bit off topic and talk to you about some wider stuff, particularly today, what we learned from Accountex. Now, don't switch off. Accountex accounting conferences might not sound exciting, but there are a lot of business people there. There's a lot of software providers, vendors, keynote speakers. As a result, we quite often get some good insight and data uh, that tells a story, really. And I thought it'd be good to share with you kind of the future of business as seen through the lens of that particular conference because there was some important points. So before I get into this video, if you like these types of videos, of course, remember to subscribe and all that kind of stuff so that you get notified whenever we release more videos just like this one. So in terms of what we learned, so the way it works, big conference, massive conference in the Excel Centre in London. If you've ever been there, you'll know the scale of this place. It's massive. And there's software vendors, uh, you know, keynote speakers, HMRC were there, the, the revenue, the tax people, uh, loads and loads of people. I mean, their, their stand particularly looked quite interesting, as you'd imagine, with people going up and talking to them and giving them their thoughts. Um, I considered it. I just couldn't work out how best to phrase my questions without sounding too negative about certain things. Uh, so I didn't, um, but you had that opportunity. So we did take in some keynote speeches that are going to prompt some more videos, I'm sure, and certainly prompted some social media posts that we've done over the last couple of weeks just with some key thoughts. So they're what I want to share with you today because it was interesting. So main one I thought was cool was they were talking a lot about Gen Z business owners. Now uh, doing what we do on, on the internet and everything else, we deal a lot with startup businesses. You know, our general clients are anywhere from naught pounds, quite a lot of those, right up to you know 10 million pound turnover. So and a lot of these people that are coming to us, you know, they might be Gen Z business owners. And it was interesting to hear the data that they're seeing from various different uh, software providers that these uh, age group of business owners are super into their tech and would like automation, really appreciate those kind of workflows. So as accountants, we need to make sure that we're providing those things and helping that process. And it's something we're heavily involved in. Uh, we get very excited about accounting tech where it works. Of course, software providers have a very vested interest in telling you about all their amazing technology. And one thing I think is very prevalent when you walk around is very easy to see, yes, that's gonna work. And no, I don't see any application to our small business clients of these particular things. I think sometimes a great software idea makes sense but it's not always a, a product I think that somebody's really gonna want or there's a feature that's you know 80% as good that they're not gonna pay you for the extra 20% like there's all these things but that was interesting so yeah they were just talking about Gen Z owners coming into the workforce now looking for more tech looking for automation and as a result as well it wasn't just the Gen Z owners that were invested in tech that actually showed that the UK itself had spent 20% more on tech during the post pandemic era now, of course, that could be in response to, you know, making sure we've got more flexible working arrangements and all the rest of it. But there has been a heavy investment in tech during that period. So that was interesting to hear. And of course, right now, without getting too deep into the tax advantages of it, for limited companies particularly, if you buy new technology equipment, there's 130% tax relief on them, which makes them basically 25% cheaper. So now is also a good time to invest in that technology. So that was quite cool. So the other thing that was really of interest to me, which wasn't a surprise, but it was cool to see the stats, was about the gig economy. So if you've not heard the term gig economy, it's pretty much like, think, think of things like being an Uber driver, Deliveroo, that, that kind of stuff, and all these kind of side hustle mentality. This idea that you know you just go up, take a, take a job doing this for a bit, and then you go do something different maybe, and as and when you want it, rather than being employed, having to turn up at the particular times and all the rest of it. That's grown three times. It's worth 20 billion pounds to the UK economy. It's massive, isn't it? So uh, I thought that was cool, and it's not a surprise because, again, because of the type of things we do, we deal with a lot of people who have those kind of side hustle incomes. And I think for a lot of people, the idea is that you're going to transition from side hustle to main deal uh, along the time. And of course, that's quite a natural journey. So that was cool. So the other thing that was interesting about the gig economy was the employment law issues. It's still in flux at the moment. You know, are Uber drivers self-employed or not? It's been a court case going on for a few years. All these kind of issues are still in play. Now, as tax people, the employment law itself is not necessarily an issue, but it really does determine how you're taxed because you're taxed differently if you're self-employed to how you are if you're employed and that's still going on. So that'd be something to continue to watch as we go through because it does make a big impact on how people are taxed. And I think it's changing the face of how people go to work. It may be that this is having also an impact on the fact that recruitment in the UK is so hard right now. Uh, that's one of the key themes we're seeing in the small business world. There doesn't seem to be enough people for the jobs that are out there. So there's a lot of competition and you know the gig economy, freelancing has really kind of uh, sort of helped in that issue. Um, maybe you could argue negatively, but you know, put some pressure on the, the workforce as a whole. So that was really interesting, I thought. One thing that is going to impact them and all of these smaller businesses, depending on their income levels, and this was a big feature of the 
of the conference as a whole, and certainly something you're going to see a load of content from us on over the very short period of time, is the, uh, this idea of making tax digital. Now, if you've not heard of this, if you're VAT registered, you probably have heard of this because you've had to keep digital records and submit digital VAT returns for a while. But what they're doing is they're bringing it in for income tax and they're starting with sole traders. This was meant to happen many years ago, but it kept getting pushed back and pushed back. People were fighting against it. Then the pandemic hit and it got shifted again. And now they're saying April 24, look, it's happening. And what's gonna happen is they're replacing your once a year tax return with five tax returns, four digital uh, returns and like a final declaration that you'll do that's just basically like a pseudo tax return and to mop everything up that you might have mucked up during the year or other sources of incomes and stuff that can't be done. But so for your sole trader, so let's say your side hustle, if you're earning more than £10,000 or your landlord earns more than £10,000, you're going to have to submit quarterly returns via software. So talking to tech, you're going to have to be in the tech. And there's going to be more videos on that, but that was a massive feature of it. So when they were talking about Gen Z owners, so a lot of Gen Z owners um, coming into the workforce, they're probably going to be, statistically anyway, uh, more likely to kind of be involved with this. But uh, in our experience, it's not always the case. Um, you, you see all sorts of spectrum of people who like their tech and don't like their tech, but it's certainly something you're going to have to be aware on. Personally, I'm still not sold on the benefits. Uh, they did a recent study that's been under the radar and uh, HMRC and released the results, and it was not particularly positive about the impact of making tax digital for VAT. And I think it's even less likely to be of benefit for the self-employed, and it's, a, it's gonna be a massive challenge. But anyway, I don't wanna go into that because there is a video coming uh, where we talk more details, but that was a big feature. So if you're in the side hustle world and you're earning over more than 10,000, that's gonna be a big piece for you. And also, if you're just generally self-employed or a landlord earning over £10,000, this is coming and it's going to be something that's going to be mega important and it's going to be talked about a lot. HMRC, I noticed literally as we were recording this video, I think yesterday, started to put out some uh, information out there into the world about it because the biggest thing is no one knows it's coming. So uh, it's going to be interesting. Now, talking to tech, the other thing that was interesting is the amount of data available now. It's really cool um, as kind of numbers people and people that interpret the data. So this was the biggest thing is what they're seeing is there's loads of data now. You can get access to much more real-time data. Where they're seeing the skill set um, missing is how do you interpret those figures? You can see how much you spent where, but what does it mean? What do you do with that data? And that's where I think some of the keynote speeches was, were talking about the importance of the kind of things we do, you know, helping interpret that data into something meaningful that means you can go away as a business owner and take action to improve your profits, for example, something like that. So, but it was cool to see all the different tools and data that's available and if you can get the workflows right. So that's quite cool. So a couple of final bits then. One's really important for small business owners, I think is a really bad trend we're seeing. So the data from Zero. So Zero did a keynote speech and of course they've got data from, you know, loads and loads of small businesses. And what they're seeing is the average day an invoice goes late is about nine days it's just under nine days that it goes late unpaid so if you imagine you might offer if you're crazy and you offer 60 day terms for example someone's still paying you on the 69th day you know it's going on quite a while and it has a massive impact on people's cash flow and if you imagine like at the real micro level that could impact your ability to pay your mortgage and things like this so and what we do see time and time again is technology will help improve that collection process invoicing promptly when you've done the job how what terms you give uh, have you got things like go cardless stripe all these things connected to make paying you easier removing the friction from your customers and clients if you can do those things you're going to get paid quicker but late payment is a massive issue the federation of small business has been fighting and absolutely pounding this for years and it doesn't seem to get too much better so uh, if you're in the business of issuing invoices and getting paid effectively on credit you know waiting for them to pay you you need to be looking at all these things and i think there's definitely a video or two in that so um, but that was interesting to see the data still no better and in fact what they were saying was the data with this roughly nine days was from January and they've seen a continually worse trend as cost pressures come in and some of the things we've been talking about um, with the state of the nation, as it were, you can see why this is gonna get worse. So definitely keep an eye on that and think about your whole process, I think. And then finally, one I don't get, to be honest, I don't enter this discussion very often, but I thought it was an interesting stat because I do talk, I don't talk about mental health, it's not really something that's in my wheelhouse to, to kind of comment on, but uh, there was a stat that showed over the last two years, 90% of surveyed business owners said they had suffered negatively with mental health issues, or at least symptoms of mental health. So 90%, I don't know if that's actually a surprise or not, I mean, it's a horrendous stat, right? But I don't know if it's a surprise given the pandemic and all the pressures that went on it over those particular period. But what was interesting was that 53% of business owners that invested in doing something about it saw an increase in their productivity. And it can be very lonely being a business owner. I think everybody presumes business owners earn loads of money and everything else, but the stats are quite the opposite, really. In a lot of cases, self-employed people on average earn less than those in employment. So, uh, yeah, it, it can be... Uh, a tough world to be in I think but yeah interesting and shocking stats but what was interesting and the easiest thing I can do to help this is in the comments below I have linked 
a uh, toolkit that Zero put together that's meant to help owners with this issue. So uh, yeah, have a, have a read of that if you are struggling and maybe there's some inspiration or some ideas in there about what you can do about it. So there we go. And that's it, that's what we learned from Account Tech. So apart from that, it was an awesome day out. Uh, you get loads of loot, you can see some of it behind us here from all the different people that we uh, robbed from their stands um, legally. They gave it away. And, uh, and, and we're able to take in kind of the new tech and as accountants, of course, it allows us to see what's coming, what can we do, what kind of extra can we add to our clients, what tech might smooth their workflows because it's all about making life easier easier. And going back a few years, if you think about it, things like we talk about Zero and QuickBooks and Free Agent and Sage, like they're all things that have existed for ages in the cloud form. But for a lot of people, there's still a lot of accountancy practices don't use them. They're still, even though they've been going for years and years, we've been using them for years. It's lovely to be in there and be able to see what's coming because sometimes you're just blown away by little features that people are adding to make life easier. For example, there's an app called Dex that we love that allows you to snap receipts. You know, you can do an invoice fetch for it. So it'll, um, with some online portals, it'll actually be able to pull, log in for you effectively and pull your invoices. All these kind of little quirks that's nice to pick up and hear what's what's coming and of course these big changes with the making tax digital for the self-employed. So there you go hopefully you've enjoyed this slightly off-topic video about our away day account and the future of business and the insights we learn. I'll see you in the next one.